Our next speaker is very special. He is an entrepreneur and a lawyer. Sam Angus is honored as a leading Starbucks lawyer by TechCrunch. His practice focuses on advising tech leaders and innovators, including Airbnb and GitHub. Sam is also a very down-to-earth person. He built his first company in his college dorm. He grew a calendar publishing business that made calendars of Michael Jackson and Madonna. In fact, it's only been six months since Sam last visited BSCF. He was a guest speaker, actually one of our most popular speakers at our startup course at Berkeley. We are honored to have him again at Stanford today. Let's welcome Sam Angus, partner in a venture capital and guru, Fanwick and West, and his moderator, Ray Liu, social chair at Stanford Graduate School Council. Good afternoon. Um, it is great to, to be back on the stage again. And uh, uh, with me here is Sam, uh, introduced by the MC just now. He's one of the top, top lawyer for venture capital in the US. And uh, just now I talked with Sam for a few minutes. And I promise you, Sam is very uh, talk active. And uh, he's a great person to talk to and to learn from. So, wow, would you mind telling my wife that? That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it is fair to say that Sam has, has helped a lot of startup companies and make many people um, to be rich. <laughs> so I think that's a good uh, point of information for all of you here. So to start with, Sam, could you please uh, provide an overview of your experience and uh, what led you to be a lawyer? Yeah. Uh, so thank you for the, the, the nice introduction and kind words. Um, I've been a lawyer for, and this sort of shocked me, 26 years now in the Valley. Um, I started, um, you know, as an entrepreneur. I started a company in the 80s, uh, which, I, which I ended up selling uh, before I went to law school, and then I ended up becoming a lawyer. Um, and so my, my practice currently at Fenwick, I'm a partner in the corporate group. I work with principally startup and venture-backed companies. Um, and my relationships with founders are very long term. Um, I think it's, it's actually most people have a misconception of what the role of a lawyer is, especially here in the Silicon Valley, um, where I've observed that the practice of law is really quite different than it is elsewhere in the country. Um, it is a relationship-based, um, sort of service you provide founders and guidance. Oftentimes, especially with the more, with the earlier stage companies and founders, the advice we're giving is not necessarily legal or tax related, although that certainly is a part of it. The advice we're giving is strategic and because uh, the, good, the good startup lawyers have seen quite a bit uh, uh, different companies and different founders and different situations and different areas of conflict. I would, I would say so much more than investors have. I've represented over a thousand companies uh, and many more founders than that in my career and I've seen it all. Um, and that kind of background and sort of pattern recognition at a minimum is extremely helpful to my clients. So that's one of the things I would recognize um, and because practicing law in the Silicon Valley is so relationship-based, um, a lot of what you end up helping founders with is networks and connecting with investors, strategic partners, and so forth. So it's interesting, the, the lawyer can become a very central figure in the success of your company. Um, so anyway, that's a, that's a bit of background. Um, just quickly, some of my clients are um, GitHub, I think, was mentioned. I, I, I've, I work with them from uh, um, uh, inception to their sale to Microsoft last year for $7 billion, which was a huge, huge success for them. Uh, Airbnb, who's been a long-term client, I incorporated Airbnb before they went to YC. And I remember um, uh, um, looking over the YC documents and, and helping them. I actually helped them try to raise money prior to YC and um, yeah, provided them with a lot of introductions. One of the funny things was that the you know, investors, 
several very well-known VCs passed on the investment. Um, and sort of the common uh, retort I got is like, who would ever rent their house out to a total stranger? And uh, so the rest is history there. Um, it turns out quite a few people would, would do that. Um, Toro is another client, um, uh, among others. So my bio is available, so. Yeah, thanks for the sharing. And, and I think from what you just uh, said, one of the main takeaways might be like, to successfully to run your startup company, it is very important to find a good lawyer like you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, you also mentioned you have uh, successfully sold your own startup company. You've been a founder and a CEO uh, for a company. And then you make a transition to become a lawyer to help many startup companies. So how hard was the transition uh, for you at that time? So, um, you know, just sort of be clear here, this was, you know, a lifetime ago uh, in the 1980s. You, uh, probably many people here were not even born in the 1980s. It was sort of shocking to me. But uh, I started a, a calendar company, a wall calendar company, which has now been completely digitized. But it was actually physical wall calendars and posters that me and my co-founder started in college. And the innovation that we, uh, that we'd like to take credit for in that industry was we started um, getting highly licensed content for wall calendars. And it turns out that at the time, there weren't many highly licensed <laughs> wall calendars. There were generic calendars of kittens, which is always a big seller, or of scenery or of artwork. Uh, but we, what we started to do is go to to celebrities and uh, ask them if we could put their image on a wall calendar. It turns out that they had no, it was found money to them and we found actually getting the licenses to be quite easy. Uh, we ended up doing the first, uh, probably now infamous, uh, Michael Jackson calendar, you know, in college. We did the first Madonna calendar when she was very hot in 85, 86. We did the Louvre calendar, we did, um, you know, many, many sort of highly licensed better homes and gardens, so forth. Long story short, um, I ended up leaving undergrad uh, a quarter shy of my degree to pursue this endeavor for seven years. Uh, we ended up from going from one calendar to 100 calendars annually. Um, and it turns out it was actually a very, um, it was a trial by fire because the business of wall calendars is, is actually pretty challenging. Uh, it turns out you've got physical product that is um, and, a, and an international supply chain to manage since we printed these calendars overseas. And on top of it, the product is like yogurt. It goes bad after the beginning of the year. So you've got sort of a perishable product you have to realize. So I learned a lot in that. Uh, ended up selling the business as Ray mentioned, but it wasn't necessarily a happy ending. I ended up with, in a dispute with my financial backer over management of the company, um, and that was a big learning experience for me. So as part of that settlement, ended up selling the, uh, my interest back to him for a nice return, uh, decided what I wanted to do with my life was go back into the law, and because my father was a lawyer, um, and uh, got my degree and went to, went to law school. Uh, you asked whether the transition was hard, I think for me personally, it was, I, I went from this very sort of entrepreneurial, risk-taking um, environment to wanting then to sort of de-risk what I was doing with my life. And that's part of why I went back to law school. But a few years after law school and becoming a lawyer, I missed working with entrepreneurs, and which is one of the reasons I moved from a law firm that I started with, which was a sort of old, very old line law firm that did a lot of financial, big financial transactions to the Silicon Valley, to Fenwick and West in 1997 when the, when the internet bubble was, was absolutely blowing this whole, whole community up. And um, one, I wanted to work in technology and two, I wanted to work more with entrepreneurs and, and, and companies. Mm -hmm. So would it, would it still be possible to buy a Michael Jackson kind of company. <laughs> I'm sh I, I don't know, given Michael Jackson's reputation these days, whether there's any company is actually publishing a what Michael Jackson calendar. Okay, yeah, <laughs> like from from what just being said, like 
for a person, there, there can be many roles in, in his or her life. And uh, it is, sometimes it is really difficult to find what role a person should play. But like, it is important to identify the characteristics of such a person. So to start, to start up company, uh, you have a lot of experience. You have your own startup company experience. And you have helped many uh, people for their startup company. So what are the key characteristics you would think like to make a mm. person to be successful yeah. to run a startup company? So one of, the, one of the things that I like a lot about what I do is I get to work with lots of different entrepreneurs in lots of different domains and technologies. So I work with um, SaaS companies, platform companies, biotech companies, chip companies, and I get to see these companies from early stage to later stage public company status. And that's really, really interesting. I, I think, you know, it's a lot, I, I mean, I completely agree with what Michael was saying earlier. I think the team is one of the most important things. When I talk to new founders, one of the things I'm evaluating, because I'm taking a risk with the team is what is the team like? Who are the founders? The ability of the team to work together. Um, uh, their persistence. I would think the number one, I believe the number one characteristic of successful entrepreneurs is persistence. Inevitably, I would say most of the founders that I work with, the idea, technology, business model they come to me with when they're starting their company will change. All the successful ones, it will change. So the hallmark of being successful in my, uh, that I observe is being flexible, adaptable, and persistent. That is, that, that is, um, that is key. So that's, those are some of the things that, that I think are extremely important. Um, and, and it's nothing unique because investors sort of look for the same thing. Yeah, I think that, that'll be very helpful. The sharing of the experience will be very helpful for those who are interested in uh, starting a company. And uh, considering you have done a lot of transactions for startup companies, and most of them, are, maybe all of them, are successful. So do you have a favorite one like for those yeah. transactions? Well, I wouldn't say all of them are successful. Um, I, I've certainly worked with companies that have not been successful, and you learn a lot. Companies learn a lot, and founders learn a lot from failure. I think, um, I think failure actually is highly underrated as, as a prerequisite to success. Um, so in terms of my favorite, my favorite has to be Airbnb. Um, uh, I, you know, as I mentioned, I incorporated the company and I've worked with them for 11 years now. I'm still working th with them as their primary corporate counsel. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, what uh, that company went through, what the founders went through, all the various different crises and the fundraises and the, the transactions that they've been involved with, the, the morphing of the business model, the different product launches is just, it, it, it was extremely exciting. I'm gratified that I was able to contribute in some small way to where they've become. Yeah, speaking of Airbnb, I just want to uh, have a quick show of hands. How many of you have used uh, Airbnb? Yeah, there's a lot. See, like you, you have you have made such a great achievement, like to help a startup company, and then this company helped those many people. And uh, you also mentioned there are uh, some failures uh, from your past experience. So, what is the most impressive failures <laughs> that uh, have set up for your uh, future success? Yeah, I think. Um, hey, listen. I mean, entrepreneurship is about taking risk. And that by definition, that means there's, there's no certainty. And entrepreneurs are working in an environment, the markets that are constantly changing and they're subject to a lot of, um, a lot of requirements such as funding and customer interest and keeping the team together. So, you know, I think, um, I, I, I won't, I, there, there's certainly been many companies that have not made it and gone under and we've helped navigate sort of the wind down process. In some cases, founders have bought back their IP to continue another company. In other cases, we've sold the company as part of an aqua hire. Um, how many people know what that is, an aqua hire? 
Okay, so an acquire is, a, is an acquisition of a company, but really the acquire, all the acquire is doing is buying a license to the IP for no cost and hiring the employees. It's a graceful exit, gives the employees a, a way to sort of continue um, with, the, with, with, the, with the company and the technology or the, or, or the acquire. All right, so before we open up for uh, questions from the audience, then my last question is, uh, do you have any advice or suggestions for, for, for the audience uh, for their career paths? Uh, so I don't want to sound cliche because I've heard this advice myself and I sort of brushed it off as very cliche, but it's true <laughs> now that I, I'm sort of on the other side of my career, is um, follow your passion of what you really like to do. You really have to be into the company you're running. If it's, and everyone has an interest in making a lot of money and certainly there are a lot of entrepreneurs that have made a lot of money. Um, I think if you're in it just for the money, you're at a disadvantage. It doesn't mean that you can't be successful, but I think it's gonna be harder to sustain the ups and the downs. So that would be my, my main thing, sort of follow your passion. And a lot of you are, you know, most of you I say are brilliant. You go, you go to fantastic schools, you have amazing backgrounds. So I'm, you know, I'm confident you will be successful in whatever you end up doing. So that would be one thing. And the other thing, as I mentioned, is persistence, is, is, is you know, having the gumption to sort of continue through the ups and the downs. It's a, it's a marathon, it isn't a sprint. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely a marathon. Yeah, it seems that we only have questions to, no, okay. So sorry, we don't have time for uh, questions from the audience. Then if you, any of you have questions for Sam, we can, uh, after we get off the stage, we can, we can find him. He will be here for, for, for a while. You, a little bit. For, yeah, for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you can find a really awesome. Or you, can, you, can, you can email me like Michael. I respond to all emails and I'll respond pretty quickly. So uh, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is, I don't know if it's in the materials, but it's on the Fenwick website. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks so much for Thank joining you. us here.